don't know. I see the greatest success of Washington's presidency as being um, establishing the precedents yes. that future presidents are going to build on uh, in establishing a stable government that people came to respect. Even if they did criticize it occasionally, they respected it. Uh, and as a result, those precedents of those eight years, some of them may be good precedents, maybe not so good precedents, but they did establish a stable government so that when there was a contested election in 1796, uh, when you have people actually running against one another for the presidency, which didn't happen uh, for both of uh, Washington's presidency, there was, there was no thought that if one side didn't win, that there would be some great upheaval. Uh, and in fact, it was an extremely smooth transition uh, to the Adams presidency, which of course then brought the, the, the odd circumstance of the, the loser becoming the vice president uh, in 1796. But everyone seemed extremely congenial during that transition, which surprised people in other countries that that happened the way it did. Yes. I think possibly the greatest success Washington uh, as president was that he went home. Mm -hmm. That after two terms he, he said no more and went home. Uh, and, and we say in the book, in the opening of it, that there were probably, possibly, mm -hmm. it's, it's a stretch, but possibly there were other people who could have beaten Britain in the revolution. Uh, but uh, it is highly unlikely that there is another person in the world who would have ended the way George Washington did by handing over his commission, uh, returning the army to Congress, and going home. Um, this, was, this was unheard of. It, it, Washington was actually touted as a, as a possible uh, uh, monarch in, in, in a Cromwellian sense at the end. In 1783, there were actually, within his own official family, people who were urging him to do this. He would have none of it. Uh, in 1793, uh, 1792, Washington wanted to go home. And he only stayed because people from completely diametrically opposed views, po the poles of Hamilton and Jefferson told him if he did, the country could not survive. So he did what he had to do. And then in 1796, he insisted. And most people thought he would be president for life. They couldn't envision a landscape without him on it in the political sense. And... Uh, when he did say that he would not do it, it was a farewell address, of course, published in September uh, before the election. It was late enough so that it wouldn't cause any kind of disruption or stir, but still was a finality. There was a sense of that being something incredibly significant. And everybody, we mentioned that Jefferson, that Monticello read this and realized this was one of the best men that or would ever know. Well, we'd always admired him, yes. and we had done some work on him earlier, not, not anything to this scale, um, and uh, broached it with our editor at Random House, and he liked the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, he at first wanted, uh, brought a, the idea of a full-blown biography, and he says, well, that's been done, uh, and it's yeah. been done recently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really. And so we, we thought, because there really hasn't been a whole lot done on his presidency, only yeah. as part of those sure. biographies. Absolutely. I think the Forrest McDonald study years ago, mm -hmm. which looks mainly at the events, not the people, yeah. uh, which it's a very good book, but it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't focus so much on, on the people themselves. Yeah. And so when we brought that up, mm -hmm. he liked the idea. And Richard Norton Smith, the Patriarch book, yeah. which is about Washington and the mm -hmm. central role he occupies. But the idea of something being revealed as a, uh, as a uh, reflection <clears throat> on the people who were around him uh, struck us as a unique way of looking at it. And again, the, uh, I was, as we were talking earlier that the book was much longer. Uh, because we, we actually have an, almost an entire chapter on Robert Dinwiddie, uh, who is, as, as Washington was quite young, uh, is one of the more unfortunate relationships in terms of uh, Dinwiddie being 
pretty honorable in Washington being pretty rot rotten about things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the, the line that we labored over and finally came, said at the very end, Dinwiddie, because he went home and became a, a staunch royalist, he was intent upon parliamentary prerogative in terms of those upstart Yankees, you know. Mm -hmm. And they said that, that, that Robert Dinwiddie's positions finally got him, George Washington got him his commission. 